being Asian Indian, you get invited to loads of dinners after you get married at all these families' houses and I could just feel myself losing control. We've got a big mirror and I was just getting changed and I just saw myself and I said, this is not right, you know. I've always been a small or a medium-sized t-shirt for the last 10 years. Ended up having to order large t-shirts because I just felt so uncomfortable. How I looked just didn't sit right to me and then that would impact how I would interact with others. You know, I never knew how great walking was for your mental and physical health until I started RNT. My abs are starting to show. I could start to see veins showing on my arms. We started with back shots. When Sharm showed me that, that was insane. You know what, this has all really, really paid off now. Everyone literally went, wow, you look so different compared to this. And how many kilos ago was that? 20. Wow. It's given me that extra drive at work, changed careers, taken more of a leadership role on my new job, given me confidence to manage staff, which is something I've never done before. You can do that with confidence, knowing that you feel right in yourself. Okay, so Anish, uh, take me back uh, about a year ago. What were the series of moments that led to your trigger moment to kickstart your RNC journey? Uh, yeah, firstly, thank, thanks for having me on the podcast. Um, I would say the main trigger moment for me was um, I got married pretty much coming up to a year ago now. Um, and, and uh, you know, being Asian Indian, you get invited to loads of dinners after, after you get married at all these families' houses. And I could just feel myself losing control. Um, I was just gaining loads of weight, had no sort of real control over my diet. Um, and I needed to put something in in place to ensure that, you know, I, I didn't just spiral out of control because, you know, I've, I've seen with RNT that people have lost significant, significant amounts of weight, but um, I didn't want to get to that stage where I was having to go through, you know, so much fat loss to, to get back to, to a, a body shape I was happy with. Um, for me, mainly, it was just being mentally in the right place. Um, I've done, I haven't done anything as, as sort of vigorous as this. I've done one of those sort of 12 to 15 week plans years ago. Um, but ever since then, I've never done anything like that. So really for me, it was, yeah, finding that, that place mentally to say, right, let me commit to this. Um, and you know, as you said on that onboarding call, go all in, um, and getting into that, that frame of mind to be able to commit to it. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that was my main trigger moment. You said, uh, to get yourself back into the right mental state. Describe where you're at before uh, committing. Um, so yeah, so you know, I've I've always sort of gone to the gym. I've always trained. So that that started at university. So in 2010, um, and I probably had my best year of training when I was doing that that sort of 15 week plan in 2016. But ever since then, you know, 2017, 2018, when I went to the gym, it was sort of clock watching. I was, you know, to be to be totally honest with you. Uh, I'd go there, go through the motions, really wouldn't have like a structure of what I was doing. Um, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't aspire to be lifting more. And I was just sort of, you know, the wheels were just turning and, and nothing, you know, I wasn't making any progress. The diet wasn't there, but um, it reached a point this year where, because I could see, see myself sort of from a body image shape deteriorating in the mirror, I needed to do something about it. Um, that, that gave me that motivation to say, right, I need to find something with, with some real structure, go back to a solid nutrition plan. Um, and then, you know, let's see what happens from there. And let's see if I can lose some significant amount of weight. At what point did you catch yourself, uh, on that journey of going up in body weight? Because sometimes it's, it's so easy to just let that slip by. And like you mentioned, you end up then having 30 odd kilos, uh, to lose. At what point in that journey of gaining weight did you did it click of like, okay, I need to catch this before it gets too, gets too bad. Um, sounds, sounds odd. So we, we moved into our new house in, in February, um, just after the wedding. And it was around sort of April time that we've, we've got a, sort of a big mirror. My, my wife's got like a dressing table in our bedroom. Um, and then I was just getting changed and I just saw myself and I said, this is, this is not right. You know, look at the way I'm looking. Um, another big thing was just the size of t-shirts. I had to literally order. I've always been like either between a small or a medium sized t-shirt, um, for the last sort of 10 years, ended up having to order large, large t-shirts because I just felt so uncomfortable, um, you know, during the day at work or, or on the weekend in those sort of smaller size t-shirts. Um, so that, that really was that main trigger moment to say, like, I need, to, I need to do something now, uh, to do this. And how does that impact your life when, when you know you're buying large size t-shirts, you're, you're not, you're not enjoying what you see in the mirror. Like how, what, what areas of your life do you feel get impacted by, by that experience and that feeling? 
I think, I think for me, it was, it was my mood. Um, you know, I knew that that was wrong. You know, how I looked just didn't feel, didn't sit right to me. Um, mm. and then that would impact how I would sort of interact with others, whether that be sort of, uh, people I work with or family members or, or ultimately my wife. And, you know, I just knew that I had to get into a better physical state to, to just make sure that I felt happier in myself. Um, if I, if you don't feel happier in your own body, then you, you know, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna feel right at all. Um, so that, that's something that I had to change. And then what happened after that, that time where you, know, you ordered that large t-shirt, you, you caught yourself in the mirror, what was, what happened next? What, what did you do? I think for me, it was, uh, you know, it wasn't a case of, right, let me pick up the phone and, and join r and straight away. I'd sort of, you know, talk through things, um, ultimately with my wife we sort of looked into it said right we need to i need to look at a structure you know and commit to it because i didn't want to sign up to anything um and then sort of you know three four weeks later you know have a really good sort of first couple of weeks during a plan and then just fall off the plan wagon so really it was sort of gearing myself up mentally before i even had that that call with one of your colleagues um the on you know pre onboarding call to say whether I was the right fit for you guys, as well as, as you guys being the right fit for me. Um, once I'd got that in my head, like, you know, I need to make a change. Um, and I need to make it now. That's when I, that's when I signed up and, and made that call. What does that moment happen? And the reason why I'm digging into this, because I think it's, it's interesting where you get a moment where you think I need to do something about it, but then you realize what actually is involved in that process. You need to be ready for that as well. How did you how did you bridge that gap and what what needed to click for you in your head to think right I need to this I'm actually ready to mm. start meal prepping differently training etc. Yeah, because I I knew you know um, I had a couple of friends who have done R and T and I and I knew it was going to be not exact to what I'd done in the past but similar that yeah I'm going to have to start counting you know counting macros um, I'm going to have to commit to going to the gym sort of four or five times a week, cardio sessions. And, you know, having listened to your podcast, I've been, I've been following r for a while. So, um, you know, things like the step, step count, um, you know, I never knew how great walking was for your, your mental and physical health until I started r and um, But knowing that in my head, right, you know, you're going to have to do these things daily, including weekends. You, you can't slip up during, you know, doing this, that period of time. So it was probably a couple of weeks um after i sort of ordered those large size t-shirts that I was like right can i do this in myself and as soon as i said to myself yeah i'm going to do this and i'm going to commit to it that's that's when i made that call so it was, it's it's just finding that you know that that headspace to say right let, let me do this and, and let me commit and outside of your friends having gone through the process what 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 about rnt made you think this is the right place for you um so it, it was more that structure of of having a, a coach who you could call upon at any time, um, as opposed to you know just buying a fitness guide and then you don't really get that support and structure. The main thing really was the fact that you're signing up for a year. Um, you know, the main difference between this and doing one of those guides is that you don't really know what you're going to do afterwards. Here, I knew right once I finished that fat loss phase, there's there's more to come. That's not the end end of the road there. Um, and I, I needed that guidance and that help. So, you know, having spoken to, um, it, it was Punit who I spoke to, um, and then seen sort of the articles on the website, I knew, right, and I've got something which will take me through that initial phase of getting into the best shape of my life, but then learning what to do afterwards, whether that, you know, I've decided to go on a muscle building phase now, um, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but knowing that I've got options at the end uh, to find to find that lifestyle solution. That was that was the key for me. And in the past that you've gone on these plans and just sort of rebounded back to square one. So yeah. So done really well for that sort of 12 to 15 weeks. Um and then just sort of got lost and then gone back to eating wherever I wanted, not having that control, not understanding portion sizes, not understanding that you need to keep up you know, your steps, your water, all of those things. Um, and, and that's really what I've learned from R&T. Um, Amazing. So you kickstart the journey. Um, you made the, you made the, the commitment to go all in. What was the process like at the beginning for you, uh, during cleaning the palette and just this going, going through this lifestyle change where, you know, in, in the past you were, you were younger, you had less responsibilities, you were not married. Now, obviously life was very, very, very different. What, what was the process like getting, getting involved? 
Yeah, so early days. I mean, I signed up at a good time where the where the weather was good. So getting your steps in, going for a walk daily, daily did help. Um, you know, we just we were just talking off air, but um I have changed careers. So the career that I've now moved into has given me some flexibility. I I was practicing dentistry before, um, not doing that now. And I, I did think to myself, actually, this is the right time because in my new job, I've got I've got some more flexibility. If I need to get to work a little bit later and work later in the day, that's fine. You know, working with the family business, I've, I've got the opportunity. So um, the early part of the process phase was good. Used to used to go to the gym early, still do. Um, get my walk in early, and it was you know using the the RNT app. It was like right, I've got this done. I've got this done today. Now let me let me go and get some work done, and and then stick to my nutrition plan. Having also sort of counted food before on the scales, I knew sort of roughly what was going to be involved with that. Um, so the first couple of weeks was just getting getting used to that, um, used to eating sort of that, you know, nutritionally dense food, which um, everyone at RNT sort of talks about compared to, you know, the snacky food I was eating before. So I was feeling full, which was great. Um, and then just sort of getting those, those things done. I think the daily checking massively helps though you know, just providing that accountability. You, you feel, you feel bad if you haven't ticked it off. Uh, you yeah, know. No one wants to see it red, right? <laughs> um, tell me about the nutrient dense element. I know you said uh, a lot of people talk about it, but how, just how different is it between eating snacks, eating those like sort of quick snacks you mentioned and, and eating more nutrient dense foods? What, what are the differences and what were you doing before that was potentially different now? So, I think I've realized it more now, you know, five months in, um, if I go out for dinner now, I, I do feel hungry afterwards because you're not having a big bowl of vegetables. You're not having, you know, a couple of my meals involved sort of to tofu, potatoes and veg or tempeh, uh, potatoes and veg. Uh, and I do feel full after those meals, but when you go out for dinner, uh, you know, whether it's for a pasta or, you know, Chinese meal, you just don't feel full. Um, so, before I was, I mean, it was breakfast was a couple of pieces of toast, not really, you know, concentrating on how much protein I was having lunch. I'd try and go and get like a chicken wrap or something thinking, okay, yeah, it's got a bit of protein in, but you know, not really, not really counting it, not, not really knowing what was, what, what other stuff was in there that wasn't, well, one, not going to make me full, but also not going to help my, my physique or my shape. Um, and dinner was, you know, it could, it, it could range. It was sort of, um, beyond meat burgers it could be pizzas it could be sort of mexican food any anything really it, there was no control over it at all so yeah this this allowed me to to regain that control how did you find uh following a vegetarian approach on this yeah fine i've i've you know i do eat meat um but it's always been something that i just eat when we go out so following a veggie plan was fine because i've, I've always we've always been vegetarian at home um, I'd had the likes of tofu, corn fillets, those kind of things before. So that, that was, that was no, there was no real adjustment phase with that, which was good. Okay. Yeah. Cause I noticed your nutrition strategy was predominantly uh, plant-based. Um, so I was wondering if you, you ate, if, if you were plant-based or if you ate meat as well. Yeah. Yeah. Meat is, is just something that, that I eat when I go out, go out to restaurants. Uh, Fair. So as you started uh, building some momentum, started losing weight, starting building uh, some more structured strategy and systems in the day, Talks about the process of coming into um, into the grind, uh, deciding to book a photo shoot. What were some of the the motivations behind doing so? Yeah, I think I think um, initially I was a bit I was undecided on whether I was going to do a shoot. Um, you know, where I started, uh, obviously being very conscious of my of my body shape, then being you know thinking about okay, if I reach this phase. You know, being topless in a gym, having loads of photos taken of you, it, it was daunting uh, initially. So, um, you know, I, I decided having sort of spoken to others on the coaching calls and, and, and said, right, actually, you know what, I'm losing this weight. Let, let's mark it with with a shoot. Um, so I think I probably decided within six to eight weeks that that's something I was going to do once I initially saw that that first bit of weight come off. Um, the grind, the grind phase is, yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, it's fun in a, in a weird way. I mean, initially the weight was coming off quite well. So I was thinking to myself, oh, I might not need to do this. And then, you know, right towards the end, spoke to Chloe and she said, like, actually, you know, let's, let's push a little bit more. Um, 
so you know steps went up calories obviously came down um the activity the other activity was was remaining the same it it was tough um but mentally rewarding i think that's that's the when i look back at those sort of couple of weeks now that that was the main thing about it is that i got through it um it did take a lot a lot more time of my day that i had to focus on on the fitness element of it but you know pre-worn work and stuff that it was going to take take a little bit more of my day out um i think cardio was probably the toughest um i tended to do all my cardio on a peloton so even just pushing your legs through when when you're that depleted in calories that that was the biggest biggest issue for me during that time and what sort of um mental health or mental personal growth did you experience during that jab period because we know times are stretched and you know depletions in place this is a perfect sort of melting pot for personal growth Talk us about that 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 process for you. Yeah, so you know, it was that it was that mental thing, you know, where all those things have changed on the app, saying you know, twelve thousand steps now a day, uh, less calories. So it was, it was sort of psyching yourself up day by day to say, come on, like you know, you've only got ten days to go, you've only got nine days to go through this. So just keep pushing through. You can see the changes it's having. You can see the weights, you know, still coming down. The shoots getting closer. Just you know. Don't don't lose focus now. You're you're so close to that, uh, you know, as you described that top of the mountain. Um, let let's get there. Let's you know, I'm going to mark this shoot after sort of five months of hard work. Don't don't let it mess up at the end. Um, just keep keep going through, keep getting those steps in. You know, keep even though obviously calories were down and you you know lifting weights at the level I was pre grind phase was was okay um you know still tried to maintain those same numbers i ended up doing a lot of steps in in the gym so between my weight sets i was just walking like up and down the gym um so that ticked off you know three four thousand steps just already in the gym session um which meant less to do in the day so it was just finding those little nuggets that i could to try and give myself some time in the evenings just to sit and relax as opposed to being you know having to go out at nine o'clock to get get your steps in um but you know, day on day, you were still seeing improvements in the mirror. Um, so that's that's really what kept me going mentally. What what did it feel like when you saw your first photograph taken? Yeah, it was it was it was a shock because you just you know um, we started with sort of the back shots, and you know you can't really see your back unless you've got yeah. full full uh, mirrors at home. Yeah, when when Sham showed me that, that was that was insane. It was like, actually, you know what? This is all all really really paid off now. And those those two weeks of hell have have, have come to light and and really really paid off. So that no, it was a proud moment. Um, you know, I, I was, I'm so glad I've done it. And what's the comparison between looking in the mirror at your shoot and, and now versus say eight eight nine months ago at the start of the year? I've been told I look like a different person. Um, wow. Even, you know, in terms of how my face looks, um, just in terms of how, you know, even without having your top off, um, you know, I've had family and friends say to me, you just look completely different. We went to uh, my wife's family's uh, Diwali function a couple of weeks ago and everyone literally went, wow, you look so different compared to the they, they, last time they'd seen me was around the wedding time. So that was, you know, months ago. Um, and they were literally like, you and know, how many kilos ago was that? 20. Wow. 20. So, yeah. So it's, um, you know, I did get the odd, um, comment towards the end going, oh, this is too much. And but I, did, I expected that I was yeah. waiting for that. And actually Ivan made a good point and goes, well, that, you know, when you start getting those comments, that's when you know, you're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a good one. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it, it uh, I can see it in myself, you know, I look at photos, even just from last year, uh, friends, weddings and things like that. It just looks so different. I go, wow, I just can't believe I, I let myself get to that stage compared to where I'm at now. Did you ever think you'd lose this 20, 20 kilos? Did you had, do you think you had 20 kilos on you? I, d- I didn't think it was going to be as much as 20. No, I, I always had sort of 60 kilos as a mark in my head of, right. If I can get down to there, I'm going to be going to be looking good. That was, that ended up only being 13 of, of the 20. Um, you know, that, that ended up being, I think my reassessment point. So <laughs> when, when Chloe then said, well, you've got another five to lose. And when initially it took a bit of, uh, it was a bit of a shock to the system, but then I said, I've got, I've got this far. Um, 
you know, mm-hmm. and then seeing some of the stats on, on others' articles and stuff, you know, and um, I think one thing that was sort of always mentioned was, you know, you overestimate um, how much muscle you carry and you underestimate how much fat you carry. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah, it's pro- probably right because albeit I can start to see some abs, it's not it's not anywhere close to what what the guys look like in their photo shoots so i said right yeah there, there's more to lose Let, let's you know let's get on with it and you have to um smash your ego for that because and the reason why i ask is most guys especially we all struggle with that you know you had 60 in your head a nice round number um uh, for me it's always been 70 and last year i got shattered down to 68 and 69 right. and it's i couldn't believe it i was like i was 71 i've never gone below 74 in all my previous cuts and this time I remember saying to the team, I was like, would you think I'm at 71 now? They're like, yeah, you got three to go. If you want to go, if you want to beat your previous ones and you want to do something, you never, you know, go beyond all of it. You got three. I was like, but 70. And they're like, yeah. I was like, so 60. <laughs> um, so did you have to like get yourself uh, dialed in for that? Yeah, it was, it was dialed in from a different, different way. It wasn't, I was quite happy to follow the, follow the, the plan. It wasn't, for me, really, the ego side of it. I was, I, I wanted to get to that. Once I got down to sixty, I wanted to see that that shape, you know, that you see in, in others' photo shoots. Yeah. Um, for me, it was a case of I've never dropped below sixty on a scale, you know, unless I was a kid or a teenager. Will the weight physically come off? You know, that's okay. that, I think that for me yeah. was the main thing. But as soon as it started to drop from there, I was I was quite happy to take it, you know. I think we had worked out my photo shoot weight was going to be about 55, ended up getting down to just under 54. So, I was, you know, once it got to reassessment, I was like, right, let, let's just keep going. And until I've got the guidance from my coach to say, otherwise, let's, let's keep following this plan. Let's, let's keep pushing towards it. And I think, um, I think I just, I was sort of focused in at that stage to say, right, keep going, keep going, because, you know, you can see the changes that you've got in the mirror. You can see sort of how I, I felt more confident in myself. Um, and I, I, I just wanted to get to that, to that best shape I could, um, where, where, we, where we then mark that, mark that with the photo shoot. If anyone listening who might be on the journey or thinking about the journey is to forget about the scale and, and focus on the look. Mm-hmm. And I think what you've really honed in on there is the importance of focusing on that look that you're going for rather than what the number says, because ultimately it's, it's it's arbitrary what that really what that really means and you're going it's, a, it's the look that you want right you have this vision in your head and sometimes it's gonna just be very different to what the logical brain uh, mm-hmm. is telling you yeah i think you know obviously we we measure our weight every day so um you can get fixated on it a little bit too much um for me it was the case of as long as week by week that that number was coming down on the scale i was quite happy um you know, there could have been some days during the week where I may have added a little bit more salt to my food, had quite a lot of water and ended up having a little bit of water retention. And I was like, okay, yeah, weight's gone up a bit today. It doesn't matter. Keep going. Um, there was just that push to say, keep going, keep, keep fighting to get towards that weight, uh, that I wanted to get to. Uh, and albeit that weight is, is given to you as a number, as long as I could st- you know see you know we measure our waist as well so as long as i could see that coming down week on week and you right i'm on track um my abs are starting to show right that you know that's coming that's coming on track um you know i could start to see veins sort of showing on my arms i was like right well obviously the the fat's the fat's getting lost from your arms as well because otherwise nice. you, you, your veins wouldn't be showing so all of those little sort of triggers said to myself right i'm on track keep you know and ultimately for me it was it was that little voice in my head saying keep going um i I just i didn't want to i didn't want to stray away from you know initially when you i think i had a cousin's wedding during clean the palette it was was slightly daunting because you've stuck you know it was literally at the end of that two-week phase um and it was daunting because you know you stuck to that ctp phase every day consistently you've got your steps in all of that's done and then i've got this social event to go to but i said to myself okay doesn't matter what the weight says or what the scale says tomorrow morning, as long as I've eaten some protein, at the, you know, I spoke to Chloe before, have some protein, have some veg and have a little bit of carbs and mm. carry on eating everything you have that same day. doesn't matter what that scale weight says tomorrow. You know that you've done the right, you know, you've done the best thing you can do 
at, well, at an Indian wedding, which is notoriously difficult to, you know, when, when you are losing weight. And then it was like, right, get back on track tomorrow. And, and eventually next week, you know, if you haven't got anything socially planned, that weight should come down. And that's, that's what I kept reminding myself of. And it was, it was just, a, you know, inevitably social um, occasions towards the end of the fat loss phase cut down a bit. Um, but yeah, it, it was just still that, that same mantra of keep going, uh, keep fighting towards that, that checkpoint. Amazing. Uh, let's talk about life after checkpoint then. Uh, what what happened since? How did you find consolidation? We, we talked just before you got on uh, hit record that you've officially marked the early phases of investment. But talk us through consolidation, uh, the phase after you complete your photo shoot. What um what was that like? Were there any trou- troubles, challenges, or was it relatively straightforward? Yeah, so I think that the the biggest thing was so we we decided to go for a celebratory meal after on the night of the photo shoot so um you know i didn't that that evening was that first time in five months where i sort of said right i'm going to eat what i want we had a dessert and all of those things and then got on the scales the next morning where it ballooned up by two kilos and i think for me that was that main thing to say okay i've had i've had that evening of enjoyment you know um that food's always going to be there when I want it. If I want to go to that same restaurant again, order those same things, I will. Um, but that was that reset to say, right, I've had my fun now with with that meal. Let's let's not throw away everything I've done in the last five months. Albeit, I know I need to gain some weight now because um, you know you're pushing yourself to the extreme during that process phase. Um, so sort of just got got back on track. Um, calories obviously started to go up incrementally so yeah consolidation invariably was yeah it was fine um i just essentially mentally was like i'm still in the process phase by meeting more food and ultimately being able to lift more of the gym because uh, my, mm. my energy levels are up compared to compared to where they were before um i think for me during consolidation it was just deciding which way i wanted to go next whether whether that was going to be finding that um you know that lifestyle solution to stay lean all year round or shall i go through a muscle building phase um and it was mainly just trying trying to figure out that i tried to add in um some more you know we had some social occasions booked um after the checkpoint um so it was just it was managing those you know sticking to the same sort of guidelines um but i think actually um the hardest bit really in the whole journey has actually been quite recently an investment where albeit my calories have have gone up to the highest they've ever you know probably ever been i still feel hungry in the evenings and this sort of craving for something sweet is has developed so yeah but i literally spoke to ed yesterday he said just find something that you like which is slightly sweet and just add it into your calories so it's just finding those little things Mm. that you can do where you're not albeit you know i am going through a muscle building phase now i don't want to be overeating and letting that that weight just balloon out of control it needs to be sort of staged and um you know the weight the weight gain needs to be staged so it's it's just you know for me it's like just don't be silly enjoy your yeah. food um enjoy going out for, for meals and stuff but just just don't be silly with it which is what I mean, I it, if it helps i'm very similar in the evenings i, I do like uh, something sweet and you know? for me it's uh i do the chocolate chocolate silk and tofu mousse mousse Okay. Yeah. And that's been that's been a staple now for nearly two years. Where I know that's in the evening is factored in my calories and it ticks off the sweet tooth that that I like. And it's super clean as well. It's just two two ingredients, just silk and tofu blended up, dark chocolate melted in a pan, mix yeah. the two together, put them in little pots, stick them in the fridge, and you've got a little mousse dessert. So I might I might need to try that one actually. I've not heard of it before. So yeah, really, it makes you can make it in five minutes and you get four or five days worth uh, and ticks exactly the box that you mentioned. And, and it's an interesting because you lost twenty kilos, right? So your body's still your brain's probably still thinking this is a new body. I, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Uh, let me fight my way back up to normal because you know, body likes normality, right? And your normality is probably settled in at around 15, 20 kilos above what you are. Um, and that that's going to be the I mean, that probably is the battle that you're you're in right now. In those moments, how how do you avoid succumbing to what the the lizard brain is saying to you? It's it's mainly just using those little things I used to do right towards the end of the process phase. So um, whether that be having a cup of tea in the evening um, that tended to quench hunger, 
true especially yeah. the sort of final final part of the process phase um i found meal timing actually was a massive factor in all of this so albeit i train early morning um you know so then i found i was actually obviously hungry in the morning um but if i rushed that second meal of my of the day then if I'd finished all my food by like five or six o'clock, that's when I started to get hungry. So it's just mentally trying to find, you know, space out your meals so that, okay, look, let me stay a bit hungrier during the day. Let me, let me give it four or five hours and then actually have my, have my last meal of the day, like seven thirty, eight o'clock. So actually I've, I've finished up then have a cup of tea and, 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 you know, carry on with the evening that way. Um, sometimes, you know, with life and stuff, work and all of those things, you do end up eating a bit earlier. So it's, it's sometimes I have, you know, be honest, I've ended up having a little bit more, um, in the evening, just, just to quench that hunger really. Um, but again, just not being silly with it, just having yeah. something, just either another bowl of veg or, um, you know, whether it be a little protein, protein bar, or protein snack, something like that, just, just, to, just to fuel myself. Um, what uh, made you decide to go on a muscle building phase as opposed to just, uh, staying with a lifestyle solution? Um, again, it was, it was finding that new challenge, really. Um, you know, it's a challenge in itself to, to build that lifestyle solution because you could easily just, you know, uh, go and put loads of weight back on and, and go back to where you were. But for me, it was a case of saying, right, actually, what, what is the next challenge with all of this? You know, I've lost all that weight. I'm in a, you know, I'm probably in the best position I am to build muscle, um, where my fat, uh, level is that low. So let, let's challenge myself. Let's see if I can start lifting, you know, the weights that I see other people do in the gym. Um, so it's it's obviously moved away from looking at the scales every day, but more towards, you know, that sort of performance-driven goal. Um, and because I've got that, you know, that motivation back in the gym where I'm not clock-watching anymore, I'm actually, actually excited to be there. Um, you know, seeing what I can chest press or see seeing what i can um do on the rdls if that, if that number goes up it gives me that that extra motivation you know mm -hmm. where i'm genuinely excited to be going to the gym in the morning um and so i'm using that sort of excitement and that that buzz to say right actually let, let's build some muscle here um ultimately i you know one of the things that during consolidation that i didn't mention before is knowing that the abs aren't going to be you know they're not going to be on show forever um because you know we're we're at a stage where we're so you know we're in such a shredded state that your abs are showing but if you want to start building muscle or even find that lifestyle solution inevitably you will you will gain some fat so it was just i you know i knew that and you know heard it on podcasts and things like that but it was a case of saying to myself right mentally right you, you know your abs won't be showing all the time as they are now you won't you have to embrace a little bit of fat around that that midsection but once I got my head around that, it's like, right, let, let's, let's try and build some muscle here. And so, and Amazing. See. Amazing. And how are you finding the process so far? Enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, just making sure, I think, um, you know, making sure I'm sending my training videos in just so my form is correct, um, without going, you know, I don't want to cause any injury cause that's just going to set me back. Um, so even if, even if the rate of, of, how much I can lift in the gym isn't going up as high as I want. I'd rather just sort of stick to uh, my form being correct. But no, it's good. Uh, amount of food I'm eating now is, is great. Um, yeah, but as it, you know, and I'm feeling better in my feeling better in the sense that okay, I'm not in that shredded state anymore. But you know, um, I've got more energy. Um, so even even at work, you know, I've got more of a buzz. I've got more of a drive. Um, we're approaching the busiest time of the year. Um, at the moment where I work so having that energy it just sort of yeah fulfills the day really awesome uh so Anish how has the physical been the vehicle for you what I've gone through physically and and mentally has well um it's given me that extra drive at work so I've changed careers um sort of taken more of a, a leadership role on at, at my new job so it's given me that you know, that confidence really to handle, uh, um, and manage staff, which is something I've never done before. Um, and I think ultimately that, you know, those kind of things, they come from actually how you look and how you feel, um, where you can go and speak to someone, um, from a management role. Um, and 
you can do that with confidence, knowing that you feel right in yourself. Whereas I reckon if I went went to speak to someone now, one of my staff, and um, you know, asked them to do something, I'd probably shy away from it if I was still back where I was, you know, pre RNT. So I think for me that that's been the biggest game changer is, is that confidence that I've got in myself now, um, which I didn't have before. Amazing, amazing. And what almost kept you from joining? For me, it was knowing that if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sign up and I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna do it half heartedly. So you know, it was mentally saying to myself, right, am I in the, am I mentally in that right position to go through and, and go through this process and stick to it? Um, because if I had any shadow of doubt, that's that's when I said to myself, I'm, I'm not going to waste anyone's time. Um, and, it, you know, ultimately, it, it's a big investment. So you, I didn't want to waste that either. Um, so as soon as as soon as I decided, you know, mentally I was in the right place, there, there was nothing holding me back, really. So Amazing. And what would you say to someone who's approaching their day one or early, in the early days of their journey right now? I, I'm just going to I'm going to literally copy exactly what you said go all in because you won't regret it. You know, if your time, if your time in the day allows, then go all in. Um, and you know, it's easy for me to say, I'll make time if, if, um, if you don't have the time during the day, but you know, everyone's circumstances are different. People have kids, uh, people have, you know, people are doctors and they've got night shifts and all of that, but you've got, if you can find different ways, you know, for example, I mentioned doing steps between your sets at the gym, you know, finding those little ways of just getting all of those little things, you know, where you can tick off yes on, on, on the app, then you just, you just know you won't regret it towards the end. Um, for me, that was the biggest thing, but it's, it's like saying, you know, when I was a dentist, it's, it's like saying to, to patients, I'll just stop smoking. It's not, it's not as easy as that. You, you can't, you can't just say to someone, just lose weight, but it's finding those little, little facets in your day where you can, you know, you've got to make time for yourself. Um, but also, you know, you have to factor in the other responsibilities that you have as well. Speaking of responsibilities, what was the conversation with your wife uh, before starting in order to get her on board uh, with, with you on the journey? Yes, yeah, um, I think the biggest thing for her is, well, the biggest conversation we had about it was, yeah, okay, you know, you're going to be going to the gym, you're going to be out of the house, you know, for part of the day, whatever. But really it was the, it was the nutrition side of it, you know, being a newly married couple, you sort of say, oh, we'll eat together, we'll cook the same foods, we'll, you know, cook meals together. Um, but I had a full support from the start, which was great. I think if I didn't, it, it would have been a tough um, journey. So the way I sort of said it to her was, look, we'll still eat together, we'll still sit at the table and eat together. But if we go to a restaurant, I may order a meat dish and you, she's vegan. So she'll, she'll be ordering sort of vegetarian and vegan food. I said, so we're ordering, we're ordering, we're eating different things, but we're still sitting and spending time together. And I think um, once we both sort of got that in our head, it, it wasn't too bad. So even now, like we don't eat the same food, but we'll still, we'll make a point to go and sit together, either watch TV together and have our food or we'll sit at the table and, and, and eat dinner together. So yeah, she she was fully supportive of the process, which which was massive, especially towards the end when things got tough. Um, mm. You need that support of your family and friends, and you know, I I was getting those comments from from I mean I won't lie, I was getting them from my mum and dad going, oh, you know, this is getting too much now. How much weight are you losing? How much more do you have to lose? Yeah, yeah. But you know, my wife, it's easier for her because she she's she understands the process. She's seen what what uh, others have done on the website. So, you know, I didn't, I, I knew that there was going to be that one person who I didn't get those comments from, uh, not, not to say, you know, not putting my mom and dad down or anything. Um, but you know, it was a case of, you need that support around you, um, to allow you to get to that end phase. So yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't ask for any more support from her. Definitely. Amazing. Any final words for the distance, Anish? No, it's um, you know it's been great great to discuss discuss the journey. But I was just say if you're a jury, if you're in that process phase at the moment, just go all in because you just you just won't regret it. Keep just keep going. Amazing. I'm glad that my uh, my my onboarding call was was valuable. Then sometimes you wonder if what you're saying is 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 seeping through. And but definitely you you speak in the language today, which is amazing to hear. And I'm glad that it's it's been it's been impressive seeing you drop 20 kilos in pretty much textbook fashion uh pretty much a percent a week i'd say 
uh, all the way to the end, um, which is textbook process phase. And what you mentioned, uh, what the reason why I mentioned that is for weight loss, you never want to delay the process longer than you need to because it just mentally gets tiring. You know, you drop 20 kilos in as pretty much as quick as you can drop 20 kilos in a safe manner. And that really is the way to do it because then you could get into the the more fun stuff, which is building muscle, getting stronger, finding that lifestyle solution. And that's what it's all about. But if you delay that process phase, you can find yourself spinning your wheels, you get mentally tired, you lose motivation. Next thing you know, you've given up. Yeah, it, it was, yeah. Um, I'd heard it a few times, actually. It was get in and out of this phase as quickly as you can, move on to the next phase. Um, so... You know the the early part. I won't, the early part of process phase was fun because you you know you're seeing the weight drop off the scales. You know it's it's great. The motivation's high, but yeah, if there's you know you can see if there's a week or two where the scale weight's not dropping too much or or something like that. You know it, it can get you know you can lose the motivation quite quickly. So it was really a case of right. Let's keep sticking to the plan. Keep staying on track. It's, it it sounds. I don't want to say I don't want to say it sounds robotic, but you kind of just want to get into that state of, right, this is, this is, you know, looking at the week ahead, right? What have I got on? This is what I'm going to be doing if I'm going out on Saturday, but I'm going to stick to the plan the rest of the time. Um, these are when I'm going to, this is when I'm going to schedule in my weight sessions, but all of those things where you, you know, if you can plan it so consistently, that's going to allow you to get out the, you know, finish that fat loss phase and, and move on to the next phase. Amazing. Thanks so much for sharing your story, Anish. I appreciate your honesty. And I know a lot of people are going to get a lot of value from this. No worries. Thanks for having me on.